hey, it's the second week in Easter, and we're looking at the Old Testament where Ezekiel sees a valley full of dry bones, and those dry bones are the whole house of Israel. Those dry bones are us. That That's us. We are cut off from each other. We are victims. We are addicts with secret sins and not-so-secret sins. We are monsters. You can see it in our gossip and our fights with one another. If every single time we are convinced that we know better than God because he dares to name the things that are killing us wrong because they hurt. You can see it in our anxiety and in our anger and our depression and in our fear and in our pain. You are the valley of dry bones. You. And it doesn't make sense because Somebody told me Christian soldiers are supposed to march onward and every once in a miraculous great while, somebody has the courage to actually ask about it. Pastors are set in the middle of the valley of dry bones to hear about your problems, your secrets, your pains, and your sins. We know what you want from us to fix it. We want, you want us to find a way to talk and somehow make it better. And so so we talk, and a few of us are actually good enough to make you feel better for like an hour or two after church. But the problem is that, does it really get better? Can these bones live? Oh Lord, you know. I don't. I mean, I can tell you what his word says, but I can't actually make you believe it. I can tell you that your sin is wrong, but I can't break your addiction to it. I can give names to all of your sins inside of the Ten Commandments, but that doesn't make them hurt any less. It doesn't undo the damage done to you and the damage that you have done to others. God's law tells us what perfection actually looks like, and you cannot do it. You can't even want to on your own. And the frustration builds because none of the words give what we want. But the Lord puts Ezekiel into the valley of dry bones with a purpose. He says, prophecy, talk to them, make them live. This is what God does. He shapes man out of dust and he breathes life into him and names him Adam. And then when Adam returns to dust and dry bones because of sin, he breathes life into him again through a prophet in a valley. See the dry bones for what they are. Call them just this, but then speak life into them. This is what he tells the preacher, that life doesn't come from yelling at the bones until they behave themselves perfectly. It doesn't come by those bones deciding to be better people. It comes from the word of the Lord, unbending, unyielding. The word of the Lord is live, live. And all of a sudden, the bones knit together, flesh comes upon them, and they live. God's word is not just a list of instructions. The word of God is Jesus. It is unbending unyielding life. Life that has conquered even the grave after dying on the cross for all of the sins that you hide for every last thing that has made you the valley of dry bones. Christ, the word of God, breathes unto you life and you will live. Did we do good? Is that is that okay? If, if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give. Help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.